Hi everyone, just hopping on an hour, not an hour, a minute earlier. Back to the grind. <laughs> um, we got back from Beaver Creek last Wednesday and then I spent a few days with my parents and my brother and today's the first real day back to work. Um, of course I love what I'm doing. It's just a little tough all the time. I feel like everyone feels the same way after getting back from vacation. Regardless of what kind of work you do, it's always a little tough. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So if you're not familiar with Hashtagitude and myself, I'm Helene, CEO and founder of Hashtagitude, a digital marketing agency here in Denver, Colorado. Uh, we focus on building authentic communities for our clients. And our clients consist of businesses that are um, lifestyle related. So that's a big umbrella of um, go, going from real estate, interior design, food and drink, um, travel, leisure, basically anything that you feel like fits under the lifestyle um, umbrella is the way that I like to put it. So we do this, we focus on the community aspect and it's more like, I like to think of it as a, you know, the old school concept of like, you know, talking face to face with people, except, you know, obviously since we are digital marketing, we do the face to face interaction online, um, but we interact with our clients, um, fans, users, etc., or potential customers um, authentically, a little manually in the sense of, you know, we're not automating those kinds of um, responses or engagement. And of course, this, this is a perfect segue into today's topic as well, but um, just focusing on the old school concept of relationship building and you know the new the new school way of technology. So as you probably saw from the from the um, title of this Facebook live, we're talking about how to interact with customers on the internet or you know how to do customer service on online. So how do we define customer service? Overall, I think of customer service, especially online, as engagement. And you know, engagement is also a very broad and abstract word, but you know, it's it's um, you know, just responding in conversations, having a conversation with people. Um, there's in terms of engagement, there I differentiate between reactive or proactive. Um, reactive, we're gonna focus on to, on today's broadcast more just because um, a lot of times businesses don't know how to respond to certain comments or questions that they receive on social media or they don't even realize that people are asking them questions or you know responding to their social media posts so we're focusing on the reactive aspect today there's the other part which is proactive which um, we re recommend for our clients and, mo and businesses and professionals to do just because proactive is how people discover other people other businesses etc so, you know, responding to customers or users' comments or questions is a way to also build your community. And without, if you're not, never gonna respond to people's comments or questions on your social media posts, then you might as well just be broadcasting on TV or radio. Because, you know, as I've said in recent, not in recent, in other broadcasts, but also through blog posts, etc. Social media and just being online is about being social. It's not about, oh, hey, I'm just gonna word vomit and disappear now. I'm gonna go back and do my work. So, first question is, do you have a dedicated um, social media platform for customer service? Um, I like to use the example of airlines. A lot of times I would say that in terms of the airlines that I do still follow, I mean, so there's been a few airlines that I've fallen out of like or loved with just because of their lack of customer service online or just their inconsistent customer service online but a lot of the airlines at least u.s based airlines use twitter accounts their twitter accounts solely for the customer service aspect not so much about promotions or content creation um but they use it for the customer service um, aspect for instance i would say United and Southwest, like I've tweeted at them before, and I think I've even tweeted at American Airlines. I've tweeted compliments to all these airlines before, being like, thanks for you know all your on-time service, getting me to my, safely to my destination. I've also 
ask them questions. I've also, you know, complained to them as well through, through Twitter. And um, I would say that for the most part, most of them have been pretty timely on the responses. Um, there was just one time where it would have been nice to receive a response from one of these airlines and they re responded two days later, which I know that these airlines have large customer service community management teams so focused on social media, but I guess when, when that situation happened, their social media team was like out for vacation or for the weekend, who knows. But yeah, if you want to, I guess, change your Twitter account over just to the customer service focus and not so much on the content creation or broadcasting level, um, you could do that. But you can also use all of your social media platforms for customer service. Um, it doesn't have to be just one dedicated platform for customer service. So it's up to you to decide if it makes sense for your business to have one channel being like, you know, if you want to have your Twitter account being customer service, making your bio, making sure that people know that that's where you're going to be answering questions about your business service, comments, concerns, etc. Of course, you know, there's also uh, Yelp and other review platforms where people can also give you feedback as well. Um, and that's also important to keep track of um, what people are saying about your business, especially if you're listed on Yelp or any other review site. So in terms of the timing of your responses, depending on how crucial or critical the comment or question is from the customer or user that's talking to your business on social media, I would say, you know, if it's if you're online already and you see the comment or question at least, you know, at, at the fastest 30 minutes after they after they sent you a message, respond if you can. Um, make sure though, even if you don't get to that question or concern or comment within those 30 minutes after they've posted, make sure you do respond to it, even if it's late. I mean, remember the saying, better late than never, and that's very, very true with, um, especially like questions that customers or users might have for, about your business or service. Like, you just want to respond, even if it's a super delayed response. I, you know, obviously I would recommend for you to get to respond as soon as possible, but I understand that we're all human and we're not going to be able to be strapped to our phones like 24-7. Um, so, you know, just try to make sure that you do respond though um, to questions or concerns that you receive on your social media posts. Related to that, so what are appropriate social media responses to your customers or users online? You know, when someone comments on your photo or your post, and it's obviously not an automated comment, but if someone's like, oh, I really like blah, blah XYZ on your photo, or I really like this new product that you guys are, are carrying, you know, a simple thanks, of course, is fine. You know, people like to be acknowledged on social media. They like, even if, I would say they definitely enjoy getting acknowledged by bigger brands, but even though, even if your business is small, quote unquote small, People just like to be acknowledged because they want to know like, hey, you know what, I'm a customer of yours or I'm a potential customer of yours and I see that you're listening or you're, you're, you're paying attention to my responses. So, you know, a simple thanks, liking their comment, you know, that's good enough, especially if they're complimenting you. So when someone is asking a question or has a concern about your service, your business, product, etc., you know, respond publicly if possible. And if you need to like, go take the conversation to private message because there's like more specifics or you'd rather not have them share their personal info on publicly on your page or your account, then, you know, ask to take the conversation to private. Now, of course, the most difficult situation to deal with would be someone that's unhappy. And obviously none of us business owners want to hear about an unhappy customer or client. Um, but you know, some people will complain on a business's page or a social media account or just like tweet about it and be like, I don't like this, this business right now because they did this to me. Um, you know, always best to address them publicly, these, um, complaints, you know, addressing them publicly, I recommend just because it allows for other people to see how your business will respond as an entity to any complaints that are, you know, that are addressed to you. So 
address publicly, make sure that you're, you know, polite. Even if it makes you angry that whatever they say, you address it publicly in a polite way. Um, go private with the customer, meaning like if, if you'd like to address the situation one-on-one -on -one with them versus like having a very open public conversation, just make sure that you do still reply publicly and be like, hey, we're sorry to hear that you're not happy with our product or service, you know, will you send us an email? And when you do go to the private route with this um, unhappy customer, make sure you still stay polite and um, just, you know, just allow for the customer to be open and honest with you without having to cause further like public drama on your Facebook or on your social media accounts, I should say. So remember to stay with your brand voice when working on customer service or, you know, when you're responding to people's comments or concerns online, just make sure that you remember your brand voice. Um, one related blog post that we published within the last month was about, you know, are emojis appropriate for your brand? Um, I'll post the link to that blog post um, in the comments below after I finish this broadcast. But you know, if emojis are appropriate when you're responding to people, then go for it. But if your business is not, you know, aimed towards a younger generation or aimed towards those who enjoy emojis, probably best to just stick with, you know, cut and dry, polite responses. Um, and that's that's all I have in terms of customer service. It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. A lot of it is you just need to practice it rather than hearing a lot of theory or rhetoric about it. So hopefully this all helped. Um, let, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. And so in terms of upcoming topics, so I announced last week that we're probably going to change the name of this to Marketing Monday next month versus Motivation Monday. I mean, I have enjoyed using the hashtag Motivation Monday. It's just, it seems overused. It also seems, um, doesn't seem in line, I guess, with what we're talking about on these Facebook Live segments. But I'm um, going to post a survey tomorrow asking for feedback. And um, hopefully, you know, of course, for all of you who have tuned in for the last few broadcasts and today's, um, please fill out the survey so that I can get some good feedback and figure out what we're going to do in terms of um, next Monday onward. And to keep you updated, especially if you're in the Dibna area, we have events coming up next month. It's gonna be a very, very busy month for me, for Hashtagitude. Um, we're hoping to grow our team by one more person next month, so stay tuned to that. So next month, we will st I will be speaking at the Athena Conference, which I mentioned last week as well. Um, it's a conference through the Colorado Women's Chamber of Commerce. It's on Wednesday, April 12th. And, you know, of course, if you're a woman professional here in Colorado, please feel free to sign up for the conference and the luncheon as well. There's an awards luncheon before the mini conference. And um, I'm doing a collaborative workshop during that conference about how to build your personal brand online. So I'll drop the link below about how you can register and you can register through there. Um, we're also starting, so starting next month, second Fridays in the mornings will be coffee, tea, and conversation at ModWorks. Um, free coffee and tea and conversation. So if you have any questions about social media, digital marketing, anything along those realms, even business building, um, I have, I've started three different businesses, so it's, if you have any questions about how to build a business, you know, feel free to stop by, but I'll have more information on that, more specifics, and the actual like event very soon. Um, we're also talking, we're also starting Walk and Talk on third Tuesdays around lunchtime in downtown Denver through our, um, through a partnership with Walk to Connect, and that's also gonna be a free event. And at the end of April, so final Wednesdays, starting in April, we're having Marketing Success Happy Hours at ModWorks as well. So I'll drop all those links below. Um, the walk and talk and the coffee, tea, and conversation will be finalized this week. Um, last few weeks have been a little hectic on my end just because that's how it's been with um, vacation and family time. So, but 
I'll be back into the regular routine, I would say, hopefully by tomorrow, and get all this stuff up so that you all can RSVP, register, etc. for all the events coming up. So thanks for tuning in today for Motivation Monday. Um, probably next week, I would say next Monday will be Marketing Monday versus Motivation Monday. And um, be on the lookout for the survey on our Facebook page. Uh, I would say tomorrow or just sometime this week. Um, I would say by, the, by Wednesday, that latest. And um, hope everyone's having a good Monday so far. Bye.